I'm going to start, start this recording. So what is this about, you guys? It's the month of May. And Terry was knee-deep in the month of May. We're going to discuss a reading for the month of May. We're going we're gonna to do a, a, a reading from the um, uh, from Denise Lynn, the uh, Sacred Travel, Traveler um, Oracle deck. But what I was just going to say, May is, uh, is going to be a very... very Full month because we just um, we just well, the first of May I believe Pluto went retrograde again. Um, we are going to have a, a, a solar solar eclipse, lunar eclipse on the fifth of, of the month, so just in a few days, and then we leave Mer Mercury retrograde on the fourteenth. Um, and I don't even know the rest of it, but it's going to be just a full month, different energies um, lining up for the month of, um, in the month of May. So, um, and we've had solar flares. So I guess just hold on for the ride and we'll see where we as sacred travelers on our path are going to take us. So I'm going to pick three cards. So, really interesting. The first card is unknown territory. Um, you are exactly where you need to be. And um, it's, it's a beautiful card. This one is, there's a, a, a person walking in the path. Um, there's birds, there's an owl flying in front of it. Uh, so it's wisdom. And there's, it's almost like the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we are, and we know that we are in really interesting times and, um, things are not necessarily, we don't know what's going to, what's going to transpire. But, um, so the sacred traveler wants you to know, sometimes the traveler feels lost, a lack of confidence or sense of being in unknown territory. It can seem that others know more or are more qualified. However, it can be very feeling of not knowing that allows one to step outside the bounds of convention and reach beyond the parameters of self that have been imposed by family, friends, society, and religion. It can be a very good thing. It can help you find yourself. Cherish those moments of not knowing. It's often during those times that the greater revelations occur. Trust that all is well. You are where you're supposed to be. The second one is grounding. Go deep and explore your roots. And it's really interesting because we are um, we are in between seasons. All even though it's spring, we're just on the verge of going into summer. And so um, the energies are kind of feeling at flux. Um, so it's really important for us to be uh, grounded right now. Um, just connecting, you know, send your roots down and connect to the to the core of the earth and just feel yourself um, being um, with the earth energy. And um, so um, sometimes the voyage is fraught with the activity of so many places to go and things to do that personal energy gets scattered. It's during those times that the sacred traveler needs to ground their energy. Grounding can be simply a matter of learning, of leaning against a tree and imagining yourself reaching into the roots and up to the branches. This card also can mean you need to stand up for yourself. Don't back down. Stand up for those who can't protect themselves. Believe in yourself. Hold firm to what you know to be true. You're like the ancient oak. With its roots deep in the earth, you are noble, valiant, and strong. And the other card is the cleansing waters. Um, purification activities and vibrant life force. So with the cleansing waters, um, the traveler periodically takes time from the journey to seek holy waters for purification and renewal. 
Standing under the mystical cleansing waterfall, the Voyager knows her energy field is being cleansed. Past life limitations are washing away and limiting beliefs are dissolving. Sometimes the traveler purifies in a stream or a mountain lake or next to the ocean waves, but also by simply standing in the rain or drinking refreshing waters. In each moment, there is the knowing that the water is clearing out what is stagnant and replacing it with shimmering, sparkling energy. Find as many ways as possible to use water as a cleansing force in your life, all with the intent of purifying your life so greater energy can emerge. So if we look at the three of these cards together, it's saying that the energies right now are going to be, um, there's a lot going on all around us. And it's important for us to um, find our grounding and make sure that we're uh, cleansing ourselves using the water as that cleansing agent. Remember that the more water you drink, then you are allowing the energies, you're allowing things to let go by standing under a shower, by going into the rain or the water or whatever, you are allowing that flow to move through you and not holding on to things. We, in, in our community, are asked to be the conduits to allow things to flow. We're going to see a lot of stuff coming up around us that isn't necessarily ours what we are being asked to do is allow it to flow through so by grounding by grounding and also by using the water for letting that flow we can help the energies to move and in the same time we're allowing ourselves to go through this process without holding on to or having energy stuck to us that don't belong to us and jonathan's got some cards there I have unshakable trust. It's a safety. Yeah, and then that was the root to go with the grounding, and then as you were talking about the water streaming through. So I feel my creativity streaming through my body, soul, mind, and that'll allow the the light and everything to to be more in, tuned and embrace, and you will be able to ground it more effectively. And then I use my imagination for positive, creative, and purposes and then I, there's another one that jumped out so i exhale with inspiration intuition and insight and that'll also aid of that and then there was the heart chakras i forgive myself and others and then there's you take your power i love and i respect myself and others and being that light of where people are at, exactly what Terry was saying, right? Um, and how to really embrace and not be caught up with all of the chaos by, but being aware of what's happening around you, but still allowing you to receive that, that the, the information, the light and grounding it down, but also, you know, holding space and, you know, holding some and then just moving on, right? Okay. And I think it's important for us sometimes to be the observer and just mm -hmm. take a step back and just see what's happening around uh, instead of diving in and being caught up in the passions of the moment. If we just sort of observe what's happening around and then just say, is this something that I need to really get myself entrapped in? And, and that's why where the grounding and the cleansing can come in is that we can observe what's going on and when we're grounded, then we're not being necessarily pulled into any specific direction. And if we do, you know, decide to engage in something, remember to do that, use those cleansing waters to just allow them uh, so that you don't become, you become more the Teflon man. Any any comments, Erica? I I totally agree. I guess um, 
anytime we tend to sense intense emotions, I think that's when I have to, like, for myself, observe myself and take a step back because when we're caught up in our emotions or triggered emotionally, it doesn't leave room for thinking. It doesn't leave room for observing and we're just carried by those feelings. I I think over time I've learned that I don't like intense emotions that make me feel bad. It's, and what I, I'm holding on to is the idea or the knowledge that I know that the creator has great plans for me. So these plans don't involve me feeling sick and bad because if I'm angry, triggered, or feeling hate towards people or anger towards people, that doesn't allow me to be connected at source to source at the same time because fear, anger, and all these emotions that are passing through they can't exist with him at the same time. You know what I mean? With, with, with that connection. And so if, if I'm outside of that love vibration, then I know like, Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm in a, and I won't say a foreign land, but it feels like a foreign land. It feels very uncomfortable. It feels very um, unsafe, feels unpredictable. It feels like the bottom's falling out and it, and then when I move back into that space of love energy source, um, everything is under control, then I can uh, become stable in my mood, in my actions. I don't have to feel lost or worried. And so I can only imagine what other people are going through when they're ranting or, you know, raging or beating their fist about any particular subject. It's making as if that one subject or topic is the biggest thing ever. And it's like, will this particular subject that you're taking a stand on stop all of ascension? Will this stop you from being connected to source? Is this going to destroy all of, you know, your community, whether it be disclosure or truthers or because that's what it is. It's this thing of placing such a high value on this one particular problem that this is going to destroy everyone and we're all going to die. Like it's that thing, like the ship is going down and, and, and it creates more chaos because it's such a high level of importance placed on this one particular issue or this one particular person. Like it would be like taking you know, whatever political leader we got at the time and making that person the pinnacle of all salvation. You know, that person is the savior or that person is the devil that's going to shut the gates and shut us all down. And um, it just reminds me of when um, my son, we were listening to this show and the guy had like a greyhound rescue. And it's like, well, Oh, there's so many things to rescue, but this guy focused on Greyhound. So good for him. But I just thought it was so funny because it was like, how how more specialized could you be than just, I'm going to rescue Greyhounds? Like there's cats and dogs and raccoons, but then there's Greyhounds, there's German Shepherds, there's pit bulls. But, you know, we can we can really focus on one thing and make that thing like the most important thing, even when I talk to my son about his teenage years, when you're a teenager, everything is important and everything is so dramatic. And then as we get older, we just realize like, oh, all these things we thought were the hugest problems, they really don't matter as much. And I feel like a lot of us, as we're going through this spiritual phase, we're like spiritual teenagers and everything that comes up is the most important thing. And there's the popular kids. And then there's the nerdy kids. And then, then there's the reject squad. And it's like, it's, you know, I don't know if you ever noticed that. Like when you were in elementary school, you were like, ha, I'm in fifth grade. I got it together. Then you go to sixth grade and you're a scrub again. Then you go to eighth grade and you're all on top. And then you go to ninth grade and you're a scrub again. 
but it's like this in the spiritual community too. Like, oh, I'm just learning this and I'm just learning that and I'm a scrub, you know? And then you think that, you know, the cool kids are in charge of the cafeteria and, you know, it's like, like you're going through all these things where you're unsure, but then when we become a spiritual adult, now we understand that all these outside opinions feelings don't matter. Even with this, with spirituality, we, we are on a learning curve, right? And so we're learning and we're learning and we get to a point and we think, oh, I think I have a handle on this. And then we take one more step and it's like, I don't know anything because we've now moved to another level. And so what we thought we knew is only one of, like you posted the picture, it's only a rung on the ladder. There's going to be something higher and something higher and something higher that we have to, and we might step at that plateau. We might step and rest someplace and we think, oh, I look at what I've achieved. And then you happen to look up and you say, oh, damn, I don't know anything because there's always more and there's another layer it's like that onion you know and yeah you, you know savor the fact that you took that layer off of the onion but guess what there's another layer to go through and then there's a deeper understanding and so i think when we uh, when we set out on a spiritual path it's been likened so many times to it's a lonely path we have people that we walk with but each one of us has our own our own way of understanding and our own knowledge that we gain and our own perception and we don't we we can't say that that the next person's perception is wrong is because they're seeing it from their perspective and from their soul's perspective their soul is helping them to transcend what it is they need to transcend a lot of people don't pick up that that uh, that 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 cane and walk with it but you know it's there for them and we are just, are just yeah. And I, I think what you just said is magical because as you begin to outgrow your, because you don't solve problems, right? So you don't solve problems, you outgrow problems, right? So as I'm um, like, we can say this thing with the transgender movement and blah blah blah, and people are like. Oh my God, you know, you want to be angry about this thing and pump your fist about this. But then as, as you grow, you you literally outgrow these things where you have to focus on that. Like, that's not something I have to fix. I don't have to fix any of that. And so now that that becomes the small thing and, and you're on a whole different layer you know what I mean like you pull you you went through this door and now you realize oh I really thought that I had a a, a true fix on the perspective of what this really means because it was in my face but now that I've yeah. pulled back yeah. this layer I realize oh I knew nothing about what that situation really involves like there's there is levels to this that there's some things that are going to have to happen that don't look good. And we think from our tiny perspective that it has to go the way I think. And it's like, no, actually, you have no clue, no clue, you know what I mean, of why these things have to happen and why, you know, and then we move forward. But, you know, and sometimes we say, oh, I can't take myself so seriously, you know, because one I, I have to understand that I can be wrong um, and I have to be able to laugh at myself. I have to begin to understand that my perspective isn't always the right perspective and my grasp on the situation isn't the greatest. And that as we begin to connect with the God mind, you know, we have such a limited perspective in this body and that we have to borrow from the God mind to see a greater perspective. We just have to keep moving on to a greater perspective. But I just see where um, I can move past these issues. And I swear, Terry, where I'm at right now is I know these things that I want to do, but I'm I'm really ready to. I only I almost feel like the whole world needs to shut the internet down. Because this thing is completely weaponized against us to get you to focus on things that 
I see things I would never even look at, that I would never focus on, that I wouldn't even know exist. And maybe they wouldn't exist on such a large scale if it wasn't something, a machine showing people, hey, this is what's cool and stupid to do today. Uh, Don't you want to dye your eyeballs green? You know, don't you want to get a tattoo on the inside of your mouth? Like, what if the internet wasn't here to share all this stupid shit? Then, (laughs) Then it wouldn't grow, right? Then as it grows, then it wouldn't be pissing this person off and it wouldn't be stressing this person out. And I, I I'm firmly believe that there's this family in North Carolina that doesn't have the internet or TV and they're real fucking happy. And they're, <laughs> and they're fishing and swimming and they know nothing about, you know, all this, this chaos is going on. And I'm really on the edge of just shutting it all down, you know, like, and I'm really on the edge too of, I'm finding that I don't really have something to say about a lot of stuff uh, because I don't care enough about it. And I don't, and it's it's not like I don't care about the world. It's just that I know that me giving an opinion on certain things isn't what's needed. It's, you know. Not my circus, not my monkeys. (laughs) Not my circus, not my monkeys. Yeah. 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 You know what? We We don't have to have an opinion on everything. You know, you can just let it be that, be that, uh, like the waters, just let it flow through, let it go through. Cause you don't have to weigh in with an opinion on something. People, you're going to, people are going to argue with you no matter what. If you say this is red, they're going to say, no, it's not. It's, it's orange. <laughs> and and it's, uh, they're going to argue uh, and, and somebody said, no, it's not orange. It's coral. Like who really cares? Right. But they have to, they want to be right. And and you're never going to win with those kind. It, and it isn't about winning and losing. It's, it's you know, when people choose to to spend their time uh, arguing about whether to buy your eyeballs green or not. It's like, well, if that's where you think your soul needs to take you, that's pretty, um, you're not listening to your higher calling. You're just being distracted. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's so much. That's trying to distract people. Because if if we are distracted and get pulled into the next rabbit hole or the next town, then we're not following our soul's purpose. We're getting caught up in in the mass consciousness of, of things. And we're not following what we came here to do. From a soul's perspective, we came with with plans, right? And it's easy to hijack it when you're pay, paying too much attention to, you know, green eyeballs, right? You're, you're not paying attention right. to where the, where the, where the, trying to prove that I'm not going to say the name and I hope we don't, but and trying to prove that this person is really a man and this person is really a woman. We know that things exist and how much more of it do you need to see? to know that it exists and just move on. Because like you say, we can spend a lot of time in rabbit holes trying to uncover, but then here we have that video this morning and that's not a gig, but it's like, okay, is that even important? What if that really was that person in that video? Was was that really important? Or, you know, I couldn't imagine somebody spent time probably making that video that was, false, you know, a deep fake video just to send out to communities, just to create chaos. And then here it is. And you go share it with somebody thinking that it's proof. And now you look like a lunatic. You you ever see that in the movies when the person knows that the bomb is going to go off and they go warn everybody about the bomb? Usually they're the one that gets arrested or put in jail or the crazy house. Because they're trying to tell everybody. You got to run and tell everybody. And then they're looking at you like, how'd you know the bomb was going to go off? You know, because <laughs> cause, cause you're, you're being frantic trying to prove these things that don't have to be proven. When people are ready to learn certain things, they're going to learn it. And, and it's going to come all about by nature. It's not going to be because you needed credit for proving that that was right. And then that's a big argument too, right? Because we get stuck on trying to prove that we're right 
and then and then I, here I, we I, are. I, I, I'll give you a perfect example of that, and that's being a, a, a parent and being a mother. You can tell your kids something a thousand times, and they just do not listen to you. They will hear the same thing from someone else, and they will come home, and they will say, blah, 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 blah. And then you sit there, and you think, do you not listen to what I have said to you? But this happens all the time is they will hear it from someone else and all of a sudden it will become a truth for them. But meanwhile, they've been living in that truth all along, but they just didn't recognize it. They call that being parent death. <laughs> it's, on the, it's on the book as an illness, as an actual, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's true, isn't it? We see that, you know, like I was that way with my parents. My daughter's the same way with me. You know, like you don't want to hear it from your parents. But when somebody else says it, it's like, oh, that's amazing. You're so smart. Hi, Shadal. Hi, how's it going? Good. Good, good, good. It's just funny that you're talking about that because that, that happened to me yesterday with my daughter. She... She repeated something that I told her many years ago. And I was like, yeah, I'm the one who told you that. And she was like, no, <laughs> like so-and-so told me. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. I was like, well, congratulations on your new learning. Like I just supported the, you know, ideology that obviously resonated with her better with somebody else telling her, but a little piece of me was like, okay, well, that was useless. <laughs> like why, why do I speak sometimes? <laughs> I, I, my, my friend and I had a thing in school, um, but she was a teacher in my, in the high school where my daughter went. And um, so we were friends. Her daughter uh, was the same age as my daughter and she went to a different school. So we would get together and we would say, okay, would you, would you sort of say this to, to my daughter? And then she would say, could you say this to my daughter? And because they would listen they wouldn't listen to their mothers, but we could get the message through, <laughs> through each other. And it's like, oh my gosh, Terry said this, or oh my gosh, Mona said that. And it's like, oh really? So you you learn you learn that. But but I think that's we see it mirrored within our within our families. But this is the way that the community is: is that you know you can be part of a community. You step, somebody says something from outside the community, and it's like, wow. How amazing is that? But it's um, it's just it's the importance of the village and losing a child. We... Right? What's that? That's, that's the importance of a village raising a child. You know, having exactly. having different role models, and everybody has a different role in that child's life. Like whether you're a teacher or a music teacher or whatever, a spiritual teacher. You know, they all kind of offer different perspectives, and things will resonate differently with. That, that specific child yeah and, and a lot of times you know um <clears throat> we we so we get so conditioned to what's being said um that when we hear a different voice it it then resonates with us at a different in a different way so then we can uh, yeah. look at it and say oh how did i miss that Mm -hmm. And that's true that? for adults too. I say child, but you know, it, it's it's true for everybody. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, I'll I'll give you an example. I did a, in my meditation classes. I've had a guide that I've had for years and years and years before I started even going to meditation classes. I just realized a couple of weeks ago that that guide was my future self. Like, I kind of knew that. I kind of knew it, but it was like, I, it took me like over 20 years to figure that out. Um, but I wasn't ready to hear it until it was a specific meditation, maybe specific sounds, specific frequency that it just like hit me. And it's like, ah, how come you, and I said, why didn't you tell me this? And they said, well, you were going to get it eventually. <laughs> so, so I guess when we're ready, we're ready, right? All the way on the, the stairway, the same stairway. 
So that that was um, for the month, right? The summary, the summary of that. Oh, yeah. would you summarize that reading? Did you? Because I'm and I'll end the recording. Okay, so uh, so summarizing the reading then. Um, the month of May, we're going to be moving through a lot of unknown energies that are going to feel like they're strange to us or things will be coming up that are just not necessarily uh, what we've expected. But it's just important that to know that we're exactly where we are needing to be and to just allow these energies to allow ourselves to be the observer of the energies and and it is unknown territory so rather than jumping in and trying to find our way through maybe just take a step back and observe and um uh important to the uh, to ground ourselves so um connecting with the earth connecting with nature going for a walk hugging a tree sending our energy to the earth being grounded gives us the ability to expand and see things from a different perspective. If we're flying all over the place, then we're not grounded and we're not able to uh, observe things from a centered space. So grounding will help to center us. And it's important that we take cleansing waters and that by that is making sure that you're drinking enough water, fresh, clean water, so that you are allowing whatever is being processed to flow through you. We don't have to hold on to anything. Uh, we are in a space where we are asked to help to transmute the energies and, and allow them to flow through us. So taking a shower, going for a walk by the, by the ocean or the river or the lake, um, drinking fresh water, just be with that flow of water. The water is cleansing and will help to take things away. Um, so if we find that we come into some tumultuous energy, make sure you're grounded and make sure you're just letting the water flow through you and just observe, take that step back and observe what's happening around you. And that's for the month of May. Oh my gosh, I gotta throw this one story in there. I don't know if anybody saw that story about Sanguru, he, he told a story about the little bird and the cow and the cat. And the little bird was on the ground and the cow pooped on the bird. And the bird was trapped inside the poop and he was just twerping and like trying to get out. And then the cat came by and he, you know, pawed it all off and let him out. And he was like, oh, thank God you saved me. And then the cat ate the bird. And so the summary of the story was, not everybody who poops on you is your enemy. Not everybody who gets you out of some poop is your friend. And sometimes when you're in some poop, you need to be quiet. Yeah. And so sometimes being quiet, <laughs> like, you know, and two, every time somebody, you feel like someone wrongs you, they're, they're not necessarily trying to hurt you all the time. It's not like you got to take up a sword and fight them. And then sometimes to, you know, observe the motives of the people around you. And maybe they're not always trying to help you when they're helping you. You know what I mean? And um, I just like that story. It just made me think about it. Like, just just ride it out. I'm in some shit right now. I'm just going to have to ride it out. <laughs> so you got to just ride it out. Exactly. The shit will dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like they say, Forrest Gump, like they say, shit happens, right? Like, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to observe the triggers? Try, continue driving to California. Observe. Do I hold my energy and continue on the path to California? Yes. Let's continue riding. You may, may yeah. bust a little wave in, maybe. But maybe not. You just take note of it. And you keep moving, right? That's Holding right. Now I'm gonna stay. Now I'm gonna stay. Now I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna end the recording though. <laughs> okay. Have a wonderful month. Take care. <laughs>